Sadie Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes, where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on Earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. Now, here is Clyde's story of Adventure in Australia. Following an expedition to Borneo and Sumatra a few years ago, Clyde and his wife Harriet visited that strange land down under Australia. It was late afternoon of their second day in Sydney, largest and most beautiful city of the island continent, when they heard a knock at the door of their hotel room. Someone's at the door, Clyde. Can you get it? Yeah, I'll see who it is, honey. Clyde, by Jove, it's good to see you. Woody, why, Woody, I didn't know you were in Sydney. Come on in. <laughs> Thanks, old man. Who is it? It's Australia's leading explorer and sportsman, honey, Woody Sutton. Not the Woodworth Sutton we used to know when. <laughs> the same, Harriet. How are you? Oh, fine, Woody. What a wonderful surprise. Yes, we heard you were on an expedition in Malaya while we were in Borneo. Oh, that was a couple of months ago. I've been back here for some time now. Well, where are you going next? To central Australia. What? You're kidding now. Oh, no, I'm not kidding. I've been commissioned to go into the bush and get some film showing what life among the Arunta is like. And what, pray tell, are the Arunta? Well, Harriet, <laughs> the Arunta are perhaps the most primitive people left on Earth. Civilization has hardly touched them. It hasn't changed them in the slightest. They are the true aborigines, little more than savages. Mm, and you're going into their wild and woolly country to take pictures of them for the history books, huh? Mm, that's roughly what it amounts to, Clyde. Matter of fact, that's my main reason in coming to see you two. Oh, what do you mean? The man who was to have gone with me has had a recurring attack of malaria. He won't be able to make it. When I heard that you folks were here, the thought occurred to me that you might like to take his place. But, Woody, I... Of course, I realized at short notice I'd plan to leave tomorrow. And there's another fellow who would like to... Clyde... Would we have time, do you think? Well, I don't know. Our, our boat sails in a week. I plan to be back here in five days. You see, I've chartered a plane to fly to Alice Springs and back. Well, in that case, maybe we could make it. And we could take pictures, too. We have our mo movie equipment with us. I'm sure you'll get some valuable film if you're game for some excitement. Tell me, Woody, uh, these Arunta aren't headhunters, are they? No. I understand they're not too friendly and most unpredictable and superstitious. But I don't expect any serious trouble from them. By golly, Woody, you got me all excited here. Which means we will go with you. Good. <laughs> we'll want to travel as light as possible, but uh, don't forget to bring your rifles. They might come in handy before we're through. My baby will return in just a moment. Now back to Clyde Beatty's story, Adventure in Australia. Here we are. The pilot gave me this map of the territory. Now, here is Alice Springs, just a small town with an airstrip. Why, it looks as if it's... In the exact center of Australia. It is. And uh, how far from this Alice Springs is the Arunta country? Well, over here is where we're going. From what I could learn, if we go down the Todd River by boat, we should run across one of their villages in a day or so. Hmm. And then we trust they'll show us some hospitality? Right. Well, at least we won't have to worry about a lot of wild animals, eh, Woody? Right again. Except, of course, for crocodiles. These rivers have plenty of them. Uh, oh, pilot... How soon will we be landing at Alice Springs? In about an hour, Mr. Sutton. We are making good time, if I do say so. Thank you. We'll have time to locate a boat and get it loaded so we can start first thing in the morning. By this time tomorrow, we should be getting close to one of the Arunta villages. Woody, I'm beginning to think these Arunta exist only in your imagination. We've been going all day and not a sign of human life yet. Be patient, Harriet. We'll find them. Or they'll find us, maybe. Look, there's another crocodile sunning itself on the bank there. Yeah. You weren't exaggerating about the number and size of those babies, Woody. Mm. 
Oh, such an ugly brute. <laughs> They're tough as they are ugly, Harriet. Uh, Do you ever shoot one? Oh, yes, several of them. But it's not easy. Don't they slip into the water before you can get close enough to hit them? They try to. The best way is to come straight at them in a the boat. They get confused for a few seconds, and if you're lucky, you can get in a shot. Where do you try to hit them? Well, that's the only thing that stops them is a shot between the eyes. We'll have a go at it on the return trip. Hello. What's this ahead? Hey, some boats on the riverbank and some people. Ah, at last. They see us, and they're all carrying spears. Ah, they don't look too friendly, do they? No, no, they don't. We'll try to get on the good side of the Inkata, the headman. I think when we give him that mirror and hunting knife, he'll give us the run of the village. Here comes the Inkata. The one with the wooden spike through his nose. Good heavens. And he's covered with scars like the rest. Yes, they're not exactly pretty, are they? Hmm. I didn't expect much, but these people are even worse than I thought possible. Why, they're little more than animals. Hey, wait. He's holding up his hand for quiet. Cora! Cora la Paloma! What white man want? White man friend. White man come in peace in Kata. White man, no friend. White man, go. Aki Maravola. Friendly devil, man. Inkata, white man, bring gift. Here, for Inkata. Oh, karate. He saw himself in the mirror. Well, that's enough to scare anybody. It might do the trick. He's fascinated by the mirror. He likes the knife, too. Keep your fingers crossed now. I, I keep. But white man... No, no, stay. But in Qatar, we want to stay just two, maybe three days. Then we go. Go now. Oron does not want white man. White man, go. But see here, it... Hukawala, Baradasa. I guess it's no use. The beggar won't give us a break. Oh, that's a shame, Woody. Well, we tried anyway. What's the matter, Woody? Did you lose something? No, no, here they are. I just wanted a cigarette. Woody, I just remembered. Your lighter. My cigarette lighter? What about it? Well, maybe if you show the Ankara how it makes fire and give that to him, maybe... Hey, that's a good idea, honey. By Jove, it might work at that. Inkata, look here. White man, make magic fire. Yes, Inkata, make magic fire, too. Ah, uh, good. Uh, just a moment. White man, give you a magic fire maker if you let us stay. Um... Let white man stay two days. We give Inkata a magic fire maker to keep. Karalo, I, I let white man stay. And so it was that a small cigarette lighter made the difference between success and failure. The Inkata turned over to us a crude hut and instructed the Aruntas to let us have the freedom of their village. They were a surly, unfriendly people, but with the headman on our side, they didn't dare make trouble for us. The next morning, the three of us got busy taking pictures and investigating the strange ways and customs of the Arunta. Come along over to this hut just ahead. I'm curious to see inside it. Why? What's it supposed to be? According to the Inkata, this is the Devil Devil House, where they keep their idols and magic charms to protect them from the evil spirits. Well, are you sure it's all right if we go in? I see no reason why not. Better duck your head, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish they'd build their doorways high. Oh, my. It's dark in here. Now, let's see now. What do you suppose this thing represents? Hmm. Looks like a wooden shield with a with a figure carved on the front. Oh, that's odd. It's the figure of a crocodile. Yes, with a human head. That must be what the Ankara was referring to a while ago. The god of the river. Hey, you found out a lot of things when you had your private talk with the headman this morning. What's with this god of the river, anyway? It seems there's a small inlet on the bank of the river which forms sort of a pool. From what I could understand, it's inhabited by a giant crocodile which the Orota believe is an evil spirit. They think it was sent there by an enemy tribe as a curse upon them. <laughs> Isn't it strange what weird things they believe? But why the human head on this image, I wonder? That is supposed to represent the chief of the enemy tribe. The Orota believe that if the crocodile is killed, the chief will die and their worries will be over. Well, have they ever tried to kill this crocodile? Oh, yes. Several of the braver men have tried, but they've all been killed in the attempt. That's not surprising. The spirit would be worthless against one of those big cracks. Exactly. Listen. But someone's coming in. Who is that man? Uh Uh-oh. It must be the medicine man. You better put down that image, Woody. He looks mad. Hey, he is mad. 
Now, just a minute, old timer. What's he trying to say? I don't know. He keeps pointing to that river god thing. Here comes the Encarta. Uh-oh, he looks mad, too. White man, you made me trouble. You die. Woody, what's he talking about? What do you mean, Encarta? We make no trouble. Encarta, no. White man sent by river god. Now, wait a minute here. Kabalu, you white man... Must die. We'll return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty and Adventure in Australia. Clyde and Harriet Beatty, with their Australian friend Woody Sutton, were deep in central Australia visiting a primitive tribe of savages called the Aruntas. But the day after their arrival, the headman of the tribe suddenly decided that Woody had been sent there by the river god to cause trouble and told the Australian that he must die. Clyde, did you find out what it was all about? What the Encada meant by saying Woody had caused big trouble and it had been sent by the river god? Yeah, yeah, I found out. Seems the chief's house burned to the ground and almost killed his oldest boy. Oh. And he's blaming Woody for that. Yes, you see, honey, the boy was fooling with that cigarette lighter he gave the Encada and set fire to the grass roof. Now, the whole tribe is convinced that Woody planned the whole thing, that this phony river god they're so scared of sent him to destroy the village. But, but it's fantastic. They can't believe all that. They can't, but they do, and they want to kill him. Where are they holding Woody captive? Can we see him? I'm afraid not, honey. We're lucky they're not holding us, too. Fortunately, they don't connect us with the river god. Well, what do they expect us to do? Just run off and leave Woody to die at their hands? I guess that's about it. But I wonder. Tell me, what are you thinking, Clyde? About that image in the Devil Devil House, the one carved on that shield. The river god? The crocodile with the human head? That's the one. I was just remembering what Woody told us they believed about that crocodile in the river inlet. What good is it to think about those superstitions? None, maybe, but on the other hand, it might do a lot of good. What do you mean? If we could kill that croc, wouldn't that prove to them that Woody wasn't an enemy? If they thought the enemy chief died and their troubles were over, they'd have no reason to take revenge on him. Why, of course. You're right, Clyde, only... Only what? Only killing that crocodile wouldn't be child's play. I know that, but it's sure worth a try. Where are you going, Clyde? You wait here, honey. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to see what the Encada thinks of the idea. Why you not go, white man? Why you stay? Listen to me, Encada. I'm trying to save the life of my friend. Your friend must die. My friend is not evil spirit, Encada. He was not sent by River God. I will kill River God to prove it. You? Kill River God? Yes, if you let my friend go. River God cannot be killed. Aruntas have tried. Aruntas always killed by River God. I know that. But I have magic to kill River God, Encada. No. You not kill. But you Caraba. said... In Carter, make better think. You mean you have a better idea? Your friend, the evil one, he must kill River God. All right, he will do it then, but I help him. If he kill River God, Aruntas not kill him. Good, you've made a deal, in Carter. Now, where will we find this River God? Ah, you and friend not go alone. Get away. Huh? I get Arunta men. We go see you kill River God. All right. Now, just let me talk to my friend a minute first. So he agreed to let me go free if I kill that clock. Is that it, Clyde? That's it. Well, I must say that sounds like a sporting proposition, but... Will they let me use my rifle? Oh, that's all taken care of. On the way over here, I told the Encada you'd have your magic stick, and so would I. He agreed we could use whatever we wanted in killing the river god. Good. Then we should stand a good chance. From what I understand, this big croc has a small inlet pretty much to himself. He lies on the bank sunning himself every afternoon at this time. We're going to have trouble sneaking up on him with the others around. Oh, that is a problem. Now, the Encada agreed to let us use a small boat if we want to. Of course, uh, he'll have some of his men in other boats to keep us from trying to get away down the river. As if we'd try that without Harriet anyway. That may be another reason they wouldn't let her come along. Well, 
We'd better get going. I'm ready, Clyde. I'm grateful to you for thinking of this. Better wait for the thanks, Woody. I just hope we can do it. Yes, I know what you mean. Woody and I, along with a dozen or so of the Aruntas, made our way through the brush to the river, then up its bank for a quarter of a mile to the inlet of the river guard. Cautiously, we slipped from the brush at the edge of the inlet. And there, on the other side, sunning himself a few feet from the water, we saw the most tremendous crocodile either of us had ever laid eyes on. There, across water, is River God. Clyde, look at the size of that monster. Why, he'll measure close to 30 feet. Now, you go kill. Yes, yes, Nkata, we will. Hmm. What do you think, Woody? I could never surprise him by going around from behind. We'll have to take that small boat and come at him from the front. Okay. Let's get started, shall we? Right. Come along. I just hope he's sleeping soundly. He'll have to be as quiet as a cat, Clyde. He slips into the water before I can get in a shot. I'm sunk. Yeah. Well, you get in the boat. I'll take the stern and paddle. All right, Clyde. Here we go. Head up the inlet a bit more, Clyde. Then we're right opposite that throat. Head straight for him. Okay. We'll have to speed it up once we're heading toward him. I'll have only about three or four seconds to get a shot. I'll try to paddle smoothly. This boat's hardly a steady shooting platform. I know. I wish I had my big express rifle instead of this one. Would you rather use mine here? No, no. I'm used to this one. Better take my chances with it. All right, Clyde. Turn toward that bank now. Okay. Get ready. We're fine so far. Just a few more feet, and I'll have a good shot. Woody, look. Look, he's seen or heard us. He's going to try to get to the water. Shoot, man, shoot. You hit him, Woody? Yes, but the beggar's getting into the water. He's coming right at us. Watch it, Woody. He's coming under the boat. That's that Clyde. Watch out for that tail. He's coming up. Shoot, Woody, shoot. Head out to do it, Clyde. Woody, he's sinking. Wait. Wait, what are you doing, Clyde? Get that rope from the bottom of the boat. Hurry. Wait, Woody. I'll try the rope. He's going to water. Here's the rope. I've got it. There. Pull on it. All right. I, I've got him. Get back in the boat. There may be other crooks around. Okay. Can I come? Oh, oh good grief, man. That was a crazy thing to do. Maybe. Now we've got our dead crocodile to show. That should be proof enough for the Aruntas that their river god is dead. There it is, Inkata. Your river god won't cause you any more trouble. Oh, it is good. White man keep promise, white man friend. Are we all free to go now, Inkata? Inkata keep promise, too. Aruntas not kill white man. Oh, that's the best news I've heard in quite some time. Let's get going, Harriet, and be on our way. Yeah, but everything's all right now. Don't you want to stick around another day and finish getting the film? As far as I'm concerned, they can wait. I say let's get out of here now. But why? I'm afraid these Aruntas might dream up some more weird ideas. For instance, suppose they get word that the enemy chief didn't die when that river god crocodile did. See, that's right. What do you think it happened then? I've got a vague idea. But you're right. Let's not wait around to find out. <laughs> okay, you evil spirit. Let's move. Here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. No time was lost in leaving the land of the superstitious Aruntas and putting an end to my adventure in Australia. There'll be another exciting story for you the next time we meet. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced and transcribed by Shirley Thomas, written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tausig. Music composed and conducted by Albert Glasser. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.